Our first introduction to the video channel. Uh, my name is Erik Le Nagevoort. Next to me is sitting Mark van der Erve, co-founder of Chart Leaders Media. Good to be here, Erik. Welcome. Mark, the first question. What are the priorities today in your area? Well, the priorities today in my area and the opportunities today um, really is related to um, how we lead the world. And I believe uh, there's significant opportunity to improve the timing of leadership and of strategy um, in terms of how we lead organizations and how we lead nations. Okay. So that also leads to more effective organizations, Mark? Well, yes, uh, of course, if you're able to really get the right man at the right place and at the right time, it means that you come up with the kind of answers that you require to actually lead an organization or a nation through its development uh, as prosperous and as good as it, is, it can be done. Right. It's quite revolutionary. It is perhaps more evolution than revolution. Right. Because, uh, you know, there's a lot of thinking already behind time, but we, we haven't found yet uh, the, the instrument or the insight that helps us actually to identify what the best timing for leaders is and what timing in, in, in an organizational sense really means, other than, you know, the timing has to be right. So, right. And I guess we are now at a point where our insight into how organizations develop into how nations develop research, that we can say something more definite as to what the timing should be of a new leader coming in or uh, when a certain strategy should be used. Okay, and where is this thinking coming from? Well, the thinking really uh, comes from uh, quite a bit of research into how organizations in general, generically emerge. Uh, no matter whether it concerns an organization uh, a company or uh, a country. So, so, and, and where did we get this uh, this insight from? Well, basically, uh, what we did is to look into the uh, way organizations emerge in nature. Right. And when we did that, we saw a parallel between what happens in nature and what happens in organizations in the human society. Oh, that's interesting. So there are quite some interesting, uh, uh, let's say, parallels that gave us a hint uh, about where to look for indication that gave us more insight into the best timing of leadership and, and strategies. So, becoming a little bit more personal, what is your typical role as a leader? My typical role as a leader? Well, I, I distinguish relating to the stages that we identified of organizational emergence that give us an insight as to when the best time for leaders and studies are. Um, well, you have four sorts of types of leaders, if you like. Yeah. You have people that come up with an entirely a new idea, that are exploring and, uh, new ideas until they find one, mm -hmm. and those I call transformers. You have people that use a, a new idea, but then you know, mold it and change it and adjust it in such a way that they actually make it uh, into something that can be sold as a product or as a service, those are builders. Yeah. And then you've got people that uh, uh, basically are very good in that repeating success and, and, and using a, an, a, an idea that has proven itself. Those are, I see, uh, basically I see as growers. And then you have people that come at the end of the cycle and say, gee, you know, after a tremendous period of growth, when, you know, the growth uh, declines, uh, then you need someone that actually looks at the organization again and says, gee, what we did so far was very effective, but we've got to do it differently. We've got to, you know, create uh, simpler processes. We have to go back to the back of a brown envelope and, and use uh, simple things. And those are what I call reformers. Well, if, if you look at those four types of leaders, transformers, builders, growers, and reformers, then I think I'm a transformer. I've been looking for a new idea and found it in the way nature, um, uh, the way nature actually fosters new organizations. According to your research, is it applicable to every 
organization or every type of activity? Well, that, that is a good question. Of course, uh, you know, when, when, when you say something like, you know, you look at uh, organization, organizations in nature and how they develop in nature and emerge in nature, then people say, well, very quickly say, well, wait a minute, that, that can't be done. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, organizations in nature are different because, you know, human organization involves humans and humans are not molecules. Well, of course, to a certain extent, that's true. Sure. But it, it, first it seems that you know, the way organization emerges, no matter whether it concerns molecules or people, is always following certain stages. But of course where people differ from molecules is that molecules uh, are very dependent, they are slaves of their environment. If the environment changes, their organization collapses. Uh, and the humans uh, distinguish themselves, that they actually are able to to, to take hold of their environment and say, listen, if the environment changes, we'll find a new environment or we'll change our organization within right. so that we can cope with this new environment. So uh, humans are, are distinguishing themselves from molecules that they're not slaves of their environment. They can okay. do something about it. Okay. So, but it doesn't mean that the, the way an organization develops in nature and in human society are different. No, they, they, they are the same. Right. But, but that difference only. Yeah, so you can also make the equation with an event coming from the outside into an organization Absolutely. like it's happening in nature. Absolutely. And, and often, you know, we do this on purpose. Uh, human societies create events uh, and try to influence uh, their organization or, or other organizations. Right. But of course, if, if you manage to create and identify um, organizations uh, uh, in, in, in human society as you identify them in nature then and you know they go through these four stages then of course you have the tremendous benefit that if you know they are in one stage they might at, at some point in time they will go to another yes. stage so you get a, a sense of well of prediction you know where you are now as an organization and that will that's where you will be going to yeah if you allow the organization to develop itself as it should. Yeah. Mark, you were talking about the four stages. Mm -hmm. Are they always moving in the same direction, in the same sequence? They do, actually. Um, um, uh, what, of course, people like to do, if they've been very successful, having had a tremendous uh, period of growth behind them, uh, you know, having seen that certain strategies, uh, you know, uh, uh, during that time were ex exceptionally uh, successful in, in generating more and more growth. And then when growth slackens and growth declines, and at that moment in time people say, well, what, what, what have we doing wrong right now? Maybe some of the strategies that we are, we are used to follow in the past, we are not following very well right now. So they go back to these strategies, try to go back. But then they find out they in vain anymore. they don't work anymore. Right. So at that time you need to do something else. Yeah. At that time you need to say, gee, you know, um, uh, what do we need to do to reset our organization in a sense? It generally means that you've got to move on to the next stage where you go through a proper confrontation, a purification process, for example, or where you reinvent the organization through certain strategies that require a different perspective of the environment, a different perspective of yourself, uh, and a different way of, of actually getting there. So, so that is, um, yeah, that is essentially uh, uh, saying that you know you got to move on. Right. You should never move backwards. Right. My last question would be um, taking all this into account. What's your view on the future? My view on the future is is relatively positive in a sense. Um, uh, why? Because well, having come across this finding that organizations always develop these ways, we have a unique opportunity to, to, to take hold of this finding and apply it in, in human society and to improve we, we, the way we manage society by actually getting the right kind of leader with the right headset for this particular stage of development or for another stage of development and to use the right kind of strategies rather than going through an endless uh, process of trial and error and finding out that yeah. indeed that didn't work so we've got to do something else. So uh, we do have an, a huge opportunity to improve the way we manage and lead uh, society and also through the same process we get an 
idea as to what might be coming down the road. So we get a perspective of the future because we know what's going coming down the yep. road through these four stages. So the effectiveness is applicable for it's well, it's applicable for organizations, whether it's a, no matter whether it's a nation or a company right. or a, an NGO or even a department in an organization, because they are all phenomena of organization involving certain players with certain roles that do things together at the same time. If it's been done repetitively or if it's been done recurrently. So that essentially is also the definition used in political sciences. That institutions are, are basically phenomena where recurring behavior patterns take place. Right. And of course that, that is organization in essence. Thank you very much, Mark, for this very insightful um, conversation we had. Thank you very much for the opportunity yeah. to uh, tell and hopefully some next of this time, stuff. Uh, we, we have a next conversation and get more in-depth uh, on, the, on the theory. All right, thank you very much. Well, not too much theory. We've got to go in and move into the practical stuff, <laughs> which is, of course, what charleaders.com is all about. <laughs>